Hello everyone, it's me, Dilly Sims. Welcome back to my channel. Today is floor plan day, the day of the week where I p usually find a floor plan off of Google and I rebuild it in The Sims. This is sometimes a fun experience for me. Like sometimes I have a lot of fun building these floor plans, but let me tell you something, sir or madam. This <laughs> This week's floor plan was, for a lack of better terms, a bitch. It was just so awful. Like, trying to figure out the floor plan and not having, like, sideways stairs really put a damper on things. And I started also, I don't want to say pre-building, well, pre-recording, there you go. I started pre-recording, so I... If you guys didn't know, I'm going to New York in the next two weeks. So I started pre-recording, and I've just been binge-building a bunch of builds. So this might be the last floor plan going up. I'm not sure. Because right now I'm focusing on building uh, Speed Build Sundays and Fixer Uppers. Because if you... I don't remember exactly which one it was, but I think it was a floor plan that I built where I was talking to you guys about just stopping floor plans altogether. But, just in case, because I was thinking about canceling floor plans as it was, so I was, I just stopped on floor plans for right now. If I finish up all my fixer uppers and all of my speed builds, then I'm going to start back up on floor plans, but we'll see. I have been going through Google, though, and finding real simple floor plans, like even starter home floor plans, and I'm like, this is, like, done. Easy. But, as <laughs> we all know, I, for the life of me, like, if you put a gun to my head, cannot build a starter home to save my life. It is so hard for me to build a starter home. And... Like I said, I've been pre-recording or pre-building, binge building, there you go, binge building, so much so that if you download this house, you will see that, and I'm so sorry to say this, a couple of rooms are not fully furnished. Why? I have no idea. I went through yesterday to take photos and I was like, oh my god, this is not possible and for some reason the bedrooms are like very poorly furnished and that's not normally my style as if you guys it, sorry I'm like stuttering I don't know if I'm like nervous like ag admitting my faults <laughs> but if you guys pay attention to what I've built in the past you know that I just cram a whole bunch of stuff into like bedrooms and everywhere bathrooms and kitchens I just a lot of stuff in there especially kitchens I just feel like there's so much room and so many items well maybe not room let me rephrase that there's always so many items well not always but in this sims there are so many items that you can just use in your kitchens and I absolutely love this sims for that reason my kitchens are so beautiful and so full of crap essentially just a whole bunch of stuff my sims will never need but it's a good amount of stuff to make it look somewhat realistic I'm like low-key afraid about pre-recording especially as many like pre-recorded videos as I have or am gonna do because I'm like my life is boring and I have nothing to talk about I have a few things I could talk about this episode or this speed build, but I'm like, uh, should I drag it out? Should I just talk about it all right now and then hopefully when Sunday comes around, or actually not even Sunday, Thursday, Thursday comes around, I have something to talk about? We'll see. Because today is the 21st and I leave for New York in, oh my phone is on drugs as always. I leave for New York in like two weeks. Because today's the 21st and I leave on the 4th. Yeah, oh my gosh, exactly two weeks from now. 
Oh. Oh, girl. Girl, 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 girl. I need to go to the store. I was just telling my mom, I need to go to the store because if you don't know this about me, I have bad feet. Going to work, I blame work for this. Work ruined my feet. I had beautiful young child feet, children feet, ch child feet, F young feet. There you go. I'm just going to say young feet. And being on my feet for so long, I just can't anymore. I'm like, I come home and I have to like soak my feet because it's just like so much pain. And I've changed shoes and that sometimes has helped. But what I found helps a lot is um, those little like Dr. Scholl's pad, pad insert thingies. Those, I swear by. It doesn't, it does wear out of course because nothing lasts forever. Buildings don't last for, forever. People don't last forever. Nothing lasts forever. If that's one thing I for sure learned about my life. But nothing lasts forever, and neither will your <laughs> Dr. Scholl pads, no matter how expensive they are. And they can be expensive, but I feel like it helps in the long run. Especially me, in my case. But I need to buy another set of those, and I need to... I want to buy new shoes, just so I can have something, or a new pair of shoes for walking. Because I feel like the shoes that I have in my closet, and I have two, four, six six pairs of shoes right now in my closet like I'm looking at them because my closet door is open and I just none of those shoes I'm looking at them and I'm like there's no way those shoes are like walking shoes that are gonna be good for me and will not ruin my feet even more than my feet are currently ruined and I feel like I'm gonna do a lot of walking in New York because I don't want to travel taxi to taxi because that costs money and am I made of money no <laughs> so yeah. Mm -mm -mm. No, not yet. I'm not made out of money yet, so I won't be. I don't want to in in ruin my feet any more than I currently have to. Uh, do I have any stories to talk about? I said I did, and I do. You know what? I have another, like, 14 minutes before this is over, so I guess I could start my story. Um, ooh, where do I even start? I have a friend named Aaron. He is not from my general area. Um, we met <laughs> on a website for gay men. And I don't have a bunch of gay friends. And I know the gay community has, like, a stigma around it for some reason. Like, and it, it makes me so angry because I just want to have, like, gay friends. And I just want the world to be a beautiful place. But I just... The gay community, especially in my area, and it's all, I feel like it's all the way everywhere you go. It's all around us in the gay community. But, like, we are just mean queens. Like, we all just want to, like, be on top. We all think we're hot shit. And for some reason, what happens is, in doing so, being we're all the best, I'm the best, I'm better than you, you ain't got nothing on me, I'm gonna talk shit, and we're all gossip queens, we end up ostracizing ourselves from each other, which makes me so angry because I want to have other fellow gay friends. I want to be able to have, like, a birthday party and invite, like, a bunch of gay friends and have drag queens perform and all that fun stuff. But as of right now in my life, I don't have that, and I would really like it. But, yeah, I found him, his... I feel like I've talked to, about him before, which I think I have, but if not, his name is Aaron. He hasn't given me permission to not talk about him, so... Um, so Aaron and I, we went... Again, he's not from here. So, I was invited by a classmate of mine who or an old classmate this was from when I took drama two semesters ago he's in a play called the four seasons or something like that or the seasons and no it's not like the hotel the four seasons it's much less exciting so this play was broken into four sections and it was just four different plays not that exciting like this not exciting at all like we went and so I 
I offered to drive because A, I think Aaron's cute and I was like, ooh, maybe if I drive him, I can like drop him off at his car and that'll first, somehow, mentally I was planning all this out because I like to think ahead. I was like, maybe I could just drop him off at his car and in doing so, it'll manipulate him into kissing me because <laughs> yeah, I'm that shallow. And so I offered to drive and he said yeah and I was like oh you know just so you don't waste gas little did he know it was all a ruse to get a kiss from him and I went picked him up at work and we went to the play the play was very boring and it was broken into four sections the first one was called uh, Anne and Louise or something like that and it was about these two old women and so like the old woman was telling her story and she's like this is about I am a Louise blah 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 I grew up here in this town of um, I'm gonna call it West Covina because I like crazy ex-girlfriend West Covina California this is my best friend um, Anna Anna is blah 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 and she suffers from Alzheimer's and this is her story and then it went into them as young women and it went into their story, them in high school, them being best friends. Anna was the most prettiest girl at West Covina High. And um, then she got pregnant and she was supposed to be homecoming queen. But because she got pregnant, they were like, oh no, that's a horrible image to show off to society. And so she forced her boy, or it wasn't even her boyfriend, it was her arch enemy's boyfriend. His name was Red. And she forced Red, who got her pregnant, to marry her. And then her best friend Louise got married, the woman who's telling the story. And she started taking pills and having a nervous breakdown up to the point where she couldn't take care of herself anymore and her husband died so Louise took care of Anne until Anne or actually Louise died first because she told her story and she's like and then I got a cold and that would be my ticket to heaven and she was so happy to go to heaven yeah and then the second play because it was like like I said four or er, four different plays all you bought the ticket for one play but it was four small plays that all lasted like two and a half hours something like that that includes intermission though and intermission was like 10 to 15 minutes the second play was about a two people who work in an office let's name them Jim and Mary and because I don't remember their names though it was not important so Jim and Mary are having an affair and Jim is married uh, Mary is not. Mary's a young, bright th thing in the office. And they decide to have an affair, like woohoo, in the basement of their office. So they're woohooing, and they're, they're like, oh, wait, and it's very com comical. So it's like, oh, wait, your elbow, ooh, your shin, or yeah, whatever. And then they get stuck, and the zipper gets stuck, and they're like, oh my gosh, how are we supposed to get out? So they're like they try to jump up and they do all this funny comical stuff and then they end up woohooing. That's the end of the story as they end up woohooing. Yeah. The third story was about it was very short. Oh, it was basically one real long monologue, which was my favorite. It was called A Widow's Guide to Auto Repair, which has nothing to do with auto repair at all. So false advertisement, first of all. It was about a widow and her car breaks down when she's going to see her husband and he's dead at, you know, his place of rest, his gravestone. And so it's just a real long monologue about how she loves him, how she had an affair. And she's very funny. She did a really good job. I love that lady. The last play was the longest and it took forever and it was so boring. It was about a mafia and the main guy who ran the mafia wanted people or his group of people to kidnap a celebrity um church host guy you know like one of those that you see and they're like oh this little boy has cancer in the legs when i touch his head he will not have cancer and then they you know stand up and start walking 
So he saw that um, reverend. I'm going to call it. Yeah, it was a reverend. He saw that reverend on TV and was like, oh my gosh, my little girl ha is in a coma and she can't wake up. I'm going to hire this guy. So he has the them bring him over and he, he finds out that the reverend cannot actually cure cancer and diseases. And so he orders one of the mafia men to hit, kill him while he steps out real quick because he just can't handle it. So one of the hitmen tries to go to kill him and then they accidentally kill each other. And then he gets a phone call like the mafia boss gets a phone call and his daughter is awake and is no longer in her coma and that's the end of the play. It was very not good. But I'm getting close to the end of the video guys so let me know what you think of this build. Let me know if you have any floor plans. If you have any floor plans that you want to send me feel free to do so. My email is in the description down below. Like, subscribe, comment, do all those fun YouTube things. Oh, and if you want to download this house, it is currently in the gallery. By You can find it by searching The Optimist or by searching Dilly Sims. And again, like, subscribe, comment, do all those fun YouTube things, and I will catch all of you guys next time. Bye, everybody.